joints. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. Watch this bite-sized video to learn about the importance of perimeter silicone seals and silicone internal joints in curtain wall systems. So when you look at a perimeter condition like this, and you see your perimeter caulk joint, which is right here, I've got it circled here. This is your perimeter caulk joint. That joint is so critically important for the performance of the entire system. The perimeter joint forms the dry line around the frame. It's also the thermal line. It absorbs building movement. Over the day, aluminum expands and contracts. So you've got to have some place for that expansion to be absorbed. It's typically absorbed here in the perimeter joint. Another thing that it does is it protects the aluminum from dissimilar metals or other material that could damage the aluminum. So let's look again at some other joints, some other considerations for your silicone joint. Surfaces have to be cleaned. You cannot apply silicone to dirt on frames because now the dirt's going to peel off and your joint's not going to seal. So surfaces have to be clean. Silicone manufacturers want to make sure that you do adhesion testing. So your subcontractor should be sending samples of material to the silicone manufacturer so they can test adhesion. Now, the fascinating thing about silicone is it can expand and contract half its distance. Now, the detail I showed you a moment ago had a half inch perimeter joint, and that's a recommended minimum. On a curtain wall, there should be a minimum of a half inch perimeter joint. And with silicone, you can see it can compress down to quarter inch or expand to three quarter inch. So silicone can expand and contract half its distance, but it can only do that if it has two points of contact. So when you look at this detail, here's your silicone here. This is a backer rod, and the backer rod is non-compatible with the silicone. Silicone will not adhere to it. So you only have two points of contact. You've got one point of contact here on the mason wall and the second point here on the aluminum. So that will allow the silicone to expand and contract. If you're concerned about a third point of contact where the silicone might adhere, you need to use some type of a bond breaker so that the silicone only has two points of contact. All right, hope that makes sense. But these perimeter joints are critically important because buildings do move, frames move. Now, when you look at this picture, the owner might say, wow, those guys were great. They cut those frames just perfect for that opening. Look at that, that is so nice and clean, but really this is not good. You don't wanna see this. Think about what I just mentioned a moment ago, thermal expansion contraction. Aluminum expands and contracts quite a bit during the day. Where's it gonna go in this condition? It's right up against that wall. There's no place for it to move. Whether the building sways a little bit. Also, you've got acid or effervescence in that brick and the mortar. That can damage aluminum. So there's no protection of the aluminum from surrounding conditions. Now, this is rather an extreme case because it's uh, effervescence or acid washing out of a brick and getting into the aluminum. But that's what can happen when you have aluminum and dissimilar metals that come in contact with each other. So we're all in the jams there your perimeter joint is maintaining a separation so that dissimilar materials won't damage the aluminum on the elevation. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company, Inc.